This video demo provides an overview of how Visual Cut allows you to deploy reports to the web. The methods can be broken down into two groups. On the left, the report is exported with its layout as an HTML page that can be hosted on a shared folder or a web folder as a freestanding page or as content hosted within iframes. On the right-hand side, we're exporting the report's data and then hosting that data on a web page that contains a web widget. That could be a web grid, a web schedule, or a web pivot table. What's common to all these methods is that Visual Cut begins with a crystal report. It exports that report to some combination of HTML, PNG, and JS files, which are then SFTP uploaded into a web folder. You don't have to use a web folder. You can use some sort of a shared folder and give users access to it. The fact that these files are simply static files that get refreshed on a scheduled basis by Visual Cut means that you benefit from having no web application, no web connectivity to some data source, and hence no server licensing and no need for special skills. If you need security on the web folder, there's an option to apply user ID and password to web folders, and that's described in this hyperlink. When using option one, Visual Cut exports the reports to HTML, and then injects into that file tags that control the auto refresh frequency when the page is loaded into a browser, the title of the page and the favorite icon for it. It also fixes and renames images and image links. It fixes hyperlinks and it can also prevent content caching and take care of the SFTP uploading. Here's the report in Visual Cut. Here's the preview. And in the export email, we elected to export to HTML40 and the magic occurs in this wizard where you can control the auto refresh frequency, set hyperlinks to launch in a new tab, control the icon for the tab and the title. In this case, it's AMP perf for performance. This area controls how image files from charts, logos, and pictures within the report get renamed and relinked to avoid cluttering the web server with uniquely named files. And finally, the area at the bottom here controls how the SFTP upload is going to take place. All of these options can then be loaded into the arguments area at the top so that when Visual Cut runs the report, all of these steps are taken care of. Here is the resulting web page. It has a nice favorite icon, the title called Amperf. And if I go to view the page source, I will see the meta tags that got injected by Visual Cut. Here is the refresh tag that would control the frequency. In this case, every 10 minutes, the browser would reload the page. So provided that Visual Cut runs the process on some frequency, the user doesn't have to reload the page. You can see the title and the favorite icon tags as well. Going back to the page itself, if I click on, let's say, Suyama, another tab opens up with the content for Suyama that was afforded by having another report bursted in a similar way so that each employee becomes a separate web page. This happens to be actually a password protected folder but I was not prompted for user ID and password because I already authenticated myself. If I right click, let's say the Volio, and select to open the link in incognito mode, then I would be prompted for user ID and password. In this case, it's simply demo and demo, and I can sign in and see that page. Option two is exactly the same as option one, except that the final product gets hosted within another HTML page. The hosting page has iframes that can load another HTML page. Here is one example. We have five panels, and each one of those is hosting a crystal report that got exported to HTML. Here is the page source. Each one of those iframes is hosting a different HTML page. In this sample, we have only two panels, and this demonstrates a technique that allows you to do a drill across, whereby a click on one of the employees on the left-hand side loads the relevant data into the iframe on the right-hand side. We just covered options one and two, and we're moving now into options three, four, and five, where web widgets are used. This is a sample web grid exported from Visual Cut. It has nothing to do with the Crystal Report's layout, Instead, it is using the data from a crystal report. And in this particular case, we're grouping on employee. We can group on any other column. We can change the orders of the columns by dragging things. Filter, select which columns I want to be visible. Sort by clicking on a column header. Change the color scheme. 
clear all filters, expand all the groups or collapse all the groups. If I expand leveling, I can see the detail for that employee. At the top of the page, Visual Cut can use a crystal formula to update content reflecting the as of date and time for the refresh. Here's what Visual Cut does when you select WebGrid as the export format. The report actually gets exported behind the scenes to Excel data only, gets parsed into JSON data, and that data set gets consumed by an HTML page. The HTML page gets generated based on a template that starts with the master template in the Visual Cut application folder copied to the export folder so that you can tweak it there. That allows you to use different templates for different grids. Now the HTML page uses the template and information about the data, such as the column names and data types, to finalize the HTML page, which also consumes the JSON data. So what gets SFTP uploaded is a combination of both the HTML page and the data set. Here's a sample web grid report in Visual Cut. And all reports for web widgets are very simple. They're just tabular in terms of layout. The magic occurs in the export email tab. I'm exporting to web grid. There are similar export formats for web pivot table and web schedule. And the wizard takes care of all the heavy lifting. It can select a default color theme, controls the refresh, provides a favorite icon and a tab name, and controls the logic that allows Visual Cut to refresh the as of date and time so that can be visible on the web page. When we process this report, you can see that there's some heavy lifting going on behind the scenes. There's an export to Excel data only, text replacements, conversion to JSON, the web page gets created based on the template, and finally there's some SFTP uploading to the website. The logic flow for the web schedule is the same as the one for the web grid. Let's look at the process in Visual Cut. So here's a web schedule demo report, and if I go to the preview, the required columns are subject, description, location, start time, and end time. You can also include a column for color. Notice that the description can include HTML text. If I go to the export email tab, the export format is web schedule. The wizard is the same as the web grid. And the process takes the same logic of generating JSON and HTML page from a template and SFTP uploading. Here's what the end result looks like. Because of the color directives, different events have different colors. We can switch from week layout to work week layout. And we can switch to monthly view. If I click on an event, I can see the description. And that's how the schedule works. The logic flow for web pivot tables and charts with saved report layouts starts very similar to the web grid logic. The data from the report is extracted into a JSON dataset. The column data types and names are parsed. The template becomes the export file name.html, and both the dataset and the HTML page get uploaded. What's different is that we have a set of saved report layouts for each report. The master set is an empty set, resides in the Visual Cut folder, and it looks like this. It's simply a definition of a master reports variable and setting it to an empty set. This then gets copied to the export folder, so it starts as an empty copy of the master file. But you're then later on free to download report layout definitions from the website, as you will see later, and make that the set of report layouts that you upload to the web to share with other users. The description below includes a link to a previous video demo that focused on how you can create pivot charts and pivot tables. This video segment focuses on switching between saved report layouts as well as managing those layouts. This icon creates a new layout, save or save as layouts, rename layouts, and you can delete layouts. And this button downloads all the layouts which are combined between those that were provided in the master pre-populated JS file and the user-defined layouts that get saved in the local storage for the browser. When you start with a blank slate and create several layouts, they are saved first to the browser local storage. You can download them using this button and make the resulting set a master set that you can then upload for use by other users. In Visual Cut, I'm going to open this sample report, refresh it, 
and go to the export email tab. Notice that the export format is web pivots table. The wizard, similar to the web grid, except that I'm not using the auto refresh in this case. And in the SFTP upload area, I'm actually uploading three files, the sales.html file, the salesdata.js, just like the web grid. And in addition, sales underscore reports.js, which contains the report layout. I'll start the process. And it took seven seconds and uploaded those three files. In the export folder, I highlighted the three files that got uploaded, but let's focus on the sales reports.js. I can see that now the master reports variable is initialized to an array with pre-populated report layouts. If I copy that array to an online JSON viewer, like this one, and switch to the viewer mode, I can see that indeed I have three report layouts defined and they're called employee performance, revenue trend by type, and discount trend by employee. Here's the sales.html page on my website. Anyone with access to that page can flip between the predefined report layouts and can also use those as a base for creating their own layouts. But let's quickly review the toolbar buttons on the right. They were discussed in a previous video. You can switch between color themes, control number formatting, and conditional formatting. So if I go back to the employee performance layout, I'm highlighting high discount percents defined in the conditional formatting options, and you can add your own conditions. You can drill down, double click a cell and see details, control the visibility of grand totals and subtotals, export for graphical layouts the export formats are a bit different i can switch between tabular views and chart views and i'll go back to a line mode click on hybrid would remove the hybrid line and another click would bring it back filter so right now it's year 2004 but i can switch to 2005. let's demonstrate how we can create new user layouts we can save as an existing layout, and we can also create a brand new layout. We can download the full set of layouts, both the master and the new user layouts, to the reports.js file, place it in the export folder, and let Visual Cut SFTP upload it to the web folder so a newly established master file can be used. When we demonstrate the save as approach, I'll also demonstrate the use of multiple axes in charts and column drill downs in tabular views. And when I demonstrate the new layout approach, I'll introduce a generally useful technique of using 0, 1 columns and converting them to percent metrics. Let's tweak this master report layout and then use save as to create a new user layout. I'll switch it over to a chart view. Because the option to use multiple axes is turned on, we can see both average of discount and sum of value if I turn off the multiple axis option, a dropdown would allow me to switch between the two metrics. I'll go back to multiple axes and switch back to tabular view. The next technique that I want to demonstrate is drill down both on rows and columns. So I'll go back to the layout designer and add country within employees. For the columns under product type, I'll add product. The end result is that we can expand and collapse the rows, and we can also expand and collapse the columns. I can hide this hybrid total by using this option. So now within hybrid, I can see the products that make up the hybrid product type, but the total for hybrid is hidden. Now let's save this layout to a new name. If I try to save, I would get a message that you can't save master reports, but save as would work. I get a message that this was saved to the local storage. And indeed, I have one more entry in the dropdown. Let's define a new user layout from scratch. I'll call it Late Deliveries by Rep. I'll select Year and Quarter as the rows, Employee as the columns, and Late as the metric. These numbers indicate how many orders were shipped late. If I switch back to the report preview in Visual Cut, 
you can see that there's a column where 1 indicates that the order got shipped late and 0 indicates that it was shipped on time. So if we look at these numbers here, we can see that in 2004, 249 orders were shipped late, and I can expand that and see the numbers by quarter. Let's go back to the report designer and add filtering options. I'll add product class and product type. So at this point, I can restrict the product class to be only bicycles. And I can see the numbers for that scenario. I'll collapse the year at this point. Here's a nifty technique. The numbers, the absolute numbers, are not that meaningful because different years had different number of orders. So it's very typical in analytic reporting that you convert these types of numbers to percent. So instead of number late, percent late. Instead of number returned, percent returned, and so on. And the switch from absolute numbers to percents is very easy once we build the report with one or zero columns. All we need to do is go back to the report layout and instead of sum, change it to average. The percents get rounded down to zero, so we need to change number formatting to percents. And I'll change the number of decimal places to one. We can add conditional formatting. So if the percent late is more than, say, 13%, let's make the font color white and the background red. Let's switch this display to a chart, and I'll use a line chart in this case. And we can see one line for each employee and how their performance varied across the years. I can also drill down into a particular year and see the quarters within that year. And I can filter the year I can turn off 2003 and 2005. I may want to focus only on a couple of employees. So let's focus on this blue employee, which happens to be King, and this employee, which happens to be Leverling. We'll turn off everybody else. All these changes to the report layout need to be saved to the local storage, so I'll click the Save button. Now to clarify what the local storage means, I'll hit Function Key 12, that opens up the developer tools within Chrome. And here's the local storage entry that stores all the report layouts. If we expand them, we can see the report name. We're going to now download the set of all saved layouts, both master and user, to our local hard drive. I copied the JSON array from that file into an online JSON viewer. And if I switch to the GUI mode, here are the same five entries that we saw in local storage. I can take that downloaded file and copy it over the old sales underscore reports.js file. And the next time Visual Cut uploads that file to my website, it will become the new master report layouts file. And any user visiting that web page will then be able to see all five layouts instead of the prior set of three master reports. To review that part of the process, you start with an empty set of master report layouts. By using the browser, you add to the local storage a set of report layouts, and when you like them, you download to re-establish the master report layouts in this file, which then gets uploaded and can be leveraged by any user that visits that web page.